It may not seem like it, but streaming high definition content on the internet is a very complex problem that requires dozens of cutting edge technologies to work properly. Improvements in video streaming in the past few years have been due to many different factors, most importantly due to the development of better video codecs and the increase in bandwidth available to the average consumer. In today's video, we will be looking at AV1 to see how it works, the advantages it offers, and how companies are embracing this new codec. Hello everyone, my name's Mike, and here at Sabrent we love to make and talk tech, so if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. So firstly, you might be asking, what is a codec, and what does it do, and why do we need it? So let's quickly address those first before we start looking at what AV1 is. The main job of a video codec is to compress the video and make it friendly for transmitting over the internet. The reason we do this and not just stream the raw video is the files are just too large. To give you some idea about raw video files, a pure uncompressed 1080p video is around 5.6 megabytes per frame or about 8.4 gigabytes per one minute of video. So it's impractical to store and transmit videos in their uncompressed form. Codecs solve this problem by using really advanced algorithms to compress the video down by 70 to 80% without much loss in perceivable video quality. Simply put, transmitting video over the internet would not have been possible if we weren't using codecs to compress them first. Not just that, even the storage of videos on local storage devices like memory cards and hard drives wouldn't have been made possible if we simply use uncompressed videos all the time. So AV1 is a relatively new video codec made by AO Media and it's meant to replace the older VP9 codec. AV1 offers significant advantages over the current well-established codecs like H.264 and H.265 or also known as HEVC. AV1 uses a process known as block-based frequency transformation to encode video. This is not a new concept and other video codecs do use similar techniques. AV1 basically divides each frame of the video into smaller blocks comprising of pixel groups. And then it uses Fourier transforms and other mathematical wizardry to store that data in a way that can be recreated easily when needed. So now, instead of the video storing data about each and every pixel in that video, only the data of the block is stored, thus reducing the amount of data needed to remember that video. This ultimately reduces the video size considerably. AV1 uses super blocks of either 128 by 128 pixels or 64 by 64 pixels, which are further subdivided into smaller 4x4 pixel blocks. This is then combined with new techniques for partitioning said blocks and better encoding algorithms to further enhance the compression. The result is a stream of video that requires less bandwidth for a given video quality, while at the same time, the video can look better at the same bitrate as compared to other video codecs. The efficiency gained with AV1 means that this codec can support a number of extra features that other codecs just can't. These include things like streaming HDR 4K content with a range of color gamuts, while at the same time using less bandwidth. AV1 can also potentially stream 8K content. Even though there isn't a demand for that yet, it just shows what the technology is capable of. To put it into numbers, according to a study done by Facebook in 2018, the AV1 encoder achieved 46.2% better data compression as compared to H.264. AV1 simply offers higher image quality while at the same time using less bandwidth. What's not to like? Other than better performance, AV1 has another thing going for it that makes it the almost obvious choice for the next commonly used codec. AV1 is open source and doesn't require a license. AV1 was developed by AO Media, which is short for the Alliance for Open Media. AO Media is basically a consortium of various technology companies ranging from 
AMD, ARM, Intel, Nvidia, Google, Microsoft, to even streaming companies like Netflix, YouTube, and Amazon. Codecs like H.265 and H.264 require licensing. So in order to make a product with, let's say, HEVC compatibility, the company needs to acquire licensing from at least patent pools like Velos Media, Technicolor, HEVC Advance, and MPEG LA. This makes the whole process complicated and expensive. With AV1, there's no such restrictions as there's no licensing requirements. As it's open source and royalty free, anyone can just use it. AV1 encoding has already been made easy to the public thanks to companies like Intel integrating the technology into their newest Arc GPUs. Intel Arc is the first GPU from Intel and it is the first to feature this technology and its initial results have been pretty impressive for AV1. AV1 is making waves in the video streaming industry. In terms of decoding, Nvidia's RTX 40 series GPUs and AMD's RX 6000 series support AV1 content. Even older gaming consoles like the PS4 support playing AV1 encoded videos. This is a positive sign that on the consumer side of video entertainment and video consumption, there is already support for this new codec. Netflix has even been using AV1 since 2020. And in fact, Netflix was the first company to use AV1 in production. It started with select titles on Android devices and Netflix saw a 20% improvement in their compression as compared to the older VP9 codec. Since November of 2021, Netflix has been streaming content using AV1 on TVs and devices that have hardware-based AV1 decoders. YouTube have also been rolling out support for AV1. Other major players now support AV1 include Facebook, Twitch, and Vimeo. AV1 offers better performance and frees everyone from the complexities of licensing. These two factors should make it enough to make it a popular codec in the future. It's a matter of when, not if, for AV1 to reach a truly global scale as more and more companies see the benefit of using AV1 over other codecs. And we kind of seeing it now. Anyway, let me know what you think of AV1. I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comment section. But anyway, that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then make sure to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.